Now fishing soft plastic jigs for crappie may be a scary, scary thought. But on today's video, I'm gonna be breaking it down to a very simple method that the next time you're out on the water, you can tie on yourself a crappy man jig and have the confidence to put some slabs in your boat. Before we begin talking about the techniques and stuff, you first gotta be able to rig your rod up correctly. So when you're first starting out, I'm not asking you to go out there and buy the most expensive rod that you can find. You can easily go to Walmart and get you a little 10 to $20 uh, medium light action rod and you'll just be fine. You just need to change the line out on whatever you buy. So what I have here is pretty much my favorite rod that I own right now. It's a medium fast 5.6 ACC crappy sticks. Now, do you need the ACC? No, I'm not sponsored by uh, any of the line, any of the reel, any of the rod. Let, let's get that out in the picture. But I really do love this rod. It's one of the only ACCs that actually has a really good tip on it that you can actually feel the bite. A lot of their other stuff, it's kind of hard, but you know, that, that's for a different video. So get your favorite rod. It doesn't really matter. Like if you like a seven footer, if you're coming from bass fishing, that's fine. But I would suggest a five to six foot rod when you're first starting out. Now the line that I run is vicious line it's really cheap it's like six bucks and you'll be good for like two years i like four pound tests but if you're just starting and you're scared you're going to break off you can go up to six pound but i do recommend four pound test line high viz which high viz basically means it's the yellow line and what that does when you're jig fishing you're able to see the line jump and watch your line as it's in the water if you're fishing in the wind and stuff you're able to see that line just pop up, set the hook, got you a big old slab. This is a, a PC Fun 500. Um, they actually sent me a couple reels a couple months ago, and I've been using this one for a while. But for crappy fishing, basically all you really need is a really good drag system that you're able to, to play out those bigger fish, but also have it tuned in enough just to be able to flip those keeper size fish in the boat. We got the rod and reel out the way. That's pretty self-explanatory, you know. If you buy one from like your local Walmart Academy, whatever, just change the line. The line that they have on there is gonna have a lot of memory and it, it, it's just a no-go. So now we're gonna start talking about soft plastics. Uh, what do soft plastics do for crappy fish? Basically, when you master using soft plastics you're able to control your jig and manipulate that fish to bite and what do i mean by manipulating a fish to bite if you've ever bass fished before you know how aggressive they are they strike top water uh you can throw a crankbait and make it mad and it'll bite the bait but the crappie's not far from different than say a bass if you're able to get that bait in front of him you're able to get him to follow that bait and he doesn't commit, you're able to manipulate your soft plastic, unlike a minnow, to make that fish get mad and hit your bait. Uh, in the world of fishing, we call that a reaction strike. And basically, what that means is, if somebody comes after you with a baseball bat and you need to defend yourself, what you gonna do? You gonna hit his butt back with a baseball bat. So, if you put this, this uh, crappy jig down there, and he's not hungry, if you make him mad enough, he'll bite. That, that's basically what I mean by a reaction bite. You're able to do that by manipulating how you fish with your rod and the certain types of crappy jigs. I to talk about different types of soft plastics. Uh, normally my go-to for a beginner, if you're a beginner watching this, I'm gonna suggest throwing a minnow style bait. This right here is a little minnow from Crappy Man Jigs, the bait company that I own. If you want to buy these, you, there'll be a link down in the description below. But this is a 1.5 inch bait. Now that may seem small or it may seem just about right to a lot of people. But trust me when I say smaller ones get a lot more bites than the bigger ones 90% of the time. Now the bigger ones will get a bigger bite. But if you're just now beginning, you just got to get that one bite to give you the confidence to keep throwing a jig and stop, stop wasting your money on minnows. So this is a minnow style bait. Basically, it looks like a minnow. There's different types of those. And we have what we call a beaver style bait, 
Now this is a two inch bait, this is called the snipe beaver. Basically when you want to throw a beaver style bait, looking for that bigger bite, you want something with a little bit more thud to it. And the, these, this bait right here has ribs. And basically when a bait has ribs on it, like the beaver or the little stinker, there's gonna be a lot more vibration in the water. So that crappie is able to detect your bait in stained and muddy water. Last but not least, we have what you would call a movement bait. Basically, this is a little paddle tail swim bait. And what these baits allow you to do is use a bigger jig head and able to cover a lot more water. Uh, you're able to throw it out there and wind it a lot more faster than you would with the minnow or the beaver style baits. Now, speaking of jig heads, there's all different types. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna suggest a 164 ounce or a 132 ounce. Now it doesn't look like much of a difference. Now, this really depends on your fishing style. At 132, if you're an impatient fisherman, if you can't wait for that fish to get that, uh, that jig to be in the strike zone, you wanna use a heavier jig. Now, if you're like me and I know that a smaller jig head, like a 164, is gonna hover above those fish, and crap your feet up 90% of the time, I would suggest throwing a 164 or a 132. I mean, if you got a little bit of wind, 132. But those are my two suggestions for beginners because you're able to manipulate these two jig heads a lot more than a jig head that's falling fast and it's going right past the fish. Let's talk about rigging these up. So you've got a jig head. Now there's different types of jig heads. You have round jig heads, you have peel jig heads, you have jig heads with eyes, jig heads with color, etc. But this is how you rig it up. So you basically, like if you're using a metal style bait, you want that hook to be right in the middle where that jig head is sitting flush on the top of this jig. So now the way to achieve that you're gonna come in here and you're gonna thread it down until it starts to curve a little bit. Now, once it curves, you're able to pop right out the back, right there, and it'll sit flush right there on that jig, jig head. <laughs> and it'll sit just like that. Now, as far as knots go, I have a couple knots on the channel. But what I do suggest is a loop knot this gives the jig perfect presentation on every single cast, no matter what. And in order to tie a loop knot, I'm gonna go over this real quick before we get into the techniques. You're gonna go in the eyelid, so your jig's just hanging, and you're gonna pull up a line, probably half a foot, I guess. And then you're gonna take two fingers, you're gonna hold it with your thumb, and you're gonna wrap your jig around your two fingers. So you make a hole. You see the hole? Now you want to take your hook point and go in that hole and out. In that hole and out and in that hole and out. Just like that, I do it three times. And then you take the eyelid where your line went through and you're going to grab that loop and you're going to slowly pull it down until it gets right to that jig head and then you take your other hand and you pull everything off and pull it tight and then you trim your excess line with a pair of scissors but i use my teeth and you're left with a, a loop perfect loop knot now what this does see soft plastics are going to float majority of the time now if there's a lot of salt added to it like a bass lure it's not going to float but most of your crappy fishing lures are going to float so when this is in the water the jig's going to float up and that loops going to allow it to be perfectly horizontal at all times that's why i suggest a loop knot. now in my opinion when you're first starting out there's probably hundreds and hundreds of techniques that you could be doing you know, as you get better, you figure out stuff that works better. 
but we're gonna tell them today's video we're going over three of what I believe are the major keys to catching your first crappie or catching a bunch of crap and believe it or not this is a lot simpler than what everybody else makes it look like so now the first technique we're gonna go over is gonna be like your bread and butter. You're gonna be able to use this technique over brush piles, at bridge pylons, at docks, whatever. And it's basically, you're gonna take your rod and you're gonna flip out probably eight feet of line. You know, given what time of year it is, you may put more, you may put less. That, that's time on the water to be able to figure out where they're at. Now, once you let out the line, you don't do nothing. You literally don't do anything. You're gonna let that jig pendulum back to you. Now, what I like to do is I'll take my line right here and I'll put my index finger right there in the crease and I'll put the line because this is gonna give me the most contact with that fish that I'm able to do. It doesn't matter if my rod's stiff. It doesn't matter if I'm using a piece of stick out the wood. If my finger's on this line, I'm gonna feel that fish bite. And you really, you just wait. You sit here with your rod and you wait. Now what I like to do and when I'm using this technique is about every five to 15 seconds, I'll give it just a little pop. And what that's gonna do is bigger fish will engulf this bait and you'll have what I call a pressure bite. And when you pop it up, you're able to detect that pressure bite. Now it does take time to be able to follow through when you feel it, but it's a bite that you cannot feel. And I know I, I told you I could feel everything, but when those bigger fish, they, they, they just put their whole mouth around it and they're there. There's no thump, there's no, none of that. So you basically just sit here and wait until you get a bite. Now, once that jig pendulum back to you, you can go to the next technique. Now you can do this technique by throwing it out and letting it uh, go down a little bit and then start winding. Or you can throw it out, let it pendulum. And if those fish are following it back to the boat, you, you can do this to give them just a little bit more time to bite. And that's what I call the granny crawl. And basically what a granny crawl is, is you're winding your reel as slow as you can stand it like if you if you feel you're winding too slow you're probably winding too fast you want to go as slow as you can possibly stand it and you do this all the way back to the boat i've had fish bite my jig right at the top of the water now the third thing that you want to be doing while you're out there is say you flick it out there and you've got a bite out there. The third way that I'm gonna tell you how to get a bite, as soon as that jig hits the water, drop drop your rod. And what that's gonna do is allow that jig to drop straight down where it's at. So you count, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and you're gonna be around three, three to two and a half to four feet. You, you can never really know. <laughs> And then you're gonna whine a little bit, pop. Whine a little bit, pop. Now there's not really a, a name for that technique. It's my dad's thing, I guess, the, the, the crappy man himself. He uses that a lot and by golly, that man can catch some fish. But hopefully you learned something on today's video just a little general breakdown about how to fish these soft plastics. Now, if you're still more comfortable fishing with minnows, by all means, get you out a bunch of poles with minnows and then have one pole with a jig on it that you, you can fish while you wait on the fish to bite the minnows. And once you get enough confidence with this jig, I can guarantee you, you're not gonna be buying no more minnows. 